In this chapter, we're going to take a look at what is probably the most powerful and certainly my favorite tool within Autodesk Navisworks, and that's Clash Detective. Now, Clash Detective is only available in the Navisworks Manage product. Navisworks Simulate and Navisworks Review do not have the automated Clash Detective, but you can still find clashes manually. What I mean is that you can literally zoom in and zoom out, fly around the model, walk through the model, and determine if you have any specific areas of interference. But with Navisworks Manage, we get the ability to automate this process. So let's take a look at this tool. I start by bringing up the Clash Detective, and the Clash Detective is essentially a question that we're going to ask the model. We have all of our models listed on the left versus all of our models listed on the right. And I can grab one specific model, for example, the structural model, and I can compare it against multiple models, maybe all of the MEP models in one clash detection test. Now I have options within this as well. For example, what type of clash am I looking for? Specifically, is it going to be a hard clash where two objects are actually interfering with each other? Is it a clearance situation where maybe I'm trying to make sure there's enough room to have a, a piece of equipment install a specific piece of machinery? Or I could even be looking for duplicates. In this case, did the architect and the structural engineer both put columns into the model? In this particular test, I'm going to be doing a hard test. Now, construction professionals know that in the real world, things like pipe bend and fittings have the ability to be slightly more or less than 90 degrees. So I can actually include a tolerance or let a little bit of overlap in some of these interferences. This is just an option for me to control what I know happens in the real world versus what happens in this virtual world. Finally, I'm able to tie in some of the construction management tasks that we saw in another chapter where we're able to actually include time into this construction process, into this clash detection process. For example, let's assume that I have to install a, a large piece of equipment on the fourth floor. I can incorporate time into the process to determine am I going to have enough room to get that piece of equipment installed without interfering with other objects. In this particular case, we're going to keep it simple, just hard interferences with no tolerance and we're not going to consider time-bound tasks at this time. As I run the Clash Detective, you can see that it's found over 1,800 specific interferences between these types of objects. Now, that's a significant number of clashes and I could certainly generate a report and send this back to the design teams to help me find a solution but it might be better to narrow this report down so that I can manage this amount of information more effectively. For example, rather than one against many, maybe I'm just going to choose one versus one. Now as I run the report, I can see that I have four specific interferences. This is much easier for me to manage, and as I communicate with the designers, I'm able to be more specific. So let's take a look at the results from our report. I have four different clashes, and if I kind of flip through these, you can actually see an image of the clash on the right. And once I have the image here, I can look at it from multiple angles, I can examine it, zoom out, I can even decide to show other background features. For example, maybe I want to show some of the other equipment that this is a part of to make this a clearer picture. I'm choosing a dim feature, but maybe I don't want to dim it so that I can clearly see exactly what's happening. But once I get the view set up the way that I want, I also, as a construction professional, have the ability to approve certain clashes. Maybe we know certain things are going to happen, and we can take care of this in the field. For example, I can choose a clash, and I can say, let's approve this clash. Now that it's you know something that I'm aware of, though, I can plan for it and make sure I have the right material and labor on, on site to handle this specific clash. But we're going to turn all of our clashes to a new status. Now, once I have the clash run, I can actually generate a report. And within this report, I can include specific information. And here's a list of the contents that we can include in the report. Now, when I write the report out, I have some other options. For example, I can write it out just as text. 
Maybe I want to write it out as viewpoints that I can then publish to an NWD model and someone can view with the Freedom Viewer. In this case, I'm going to write it out as an HTML report. This will allow me to place this in a web page. So I'm going to write the report out and I'll place it in my class reports directory. Let's call this today's report. And with and I'll name this file today's clashes. So now that I've written the report out, let's take a look at that report in it specifically. So I'll navigate to where I have this on the server. And there's our Clash Reports directory. There's today's report. There's the four images that actually make up this specific report. Here's the HTML or the web page. If I double click on that, I'm literally going to open this in Internet Explorer. And here we can see here's the first Clash. It gives me an image of the Clash. I can actually expand this and you can see there's the pipe sticking through the piece of duct. It also gives me information about how much of the, how big the clash is, what type of clash is it, what's the current status, where is it located in the XYZ coordinates, when was the report run, who ran it, and even gives me specific information. For example, it's telling me that a slab and this hot water pipe are the two things interfering with each other. With this amount of information, the designers now have enough information to go and maybe create an opening in the slab and reinforce it properly so we don't have an interference in the future. When they send me a new model, I can then up, uh, upload it to the Navisworks project, rerun the report, and determine if it's been solved or not. But by having these reports, I'm literally creating a a status report or an audit trail week to week to week. So I can go back and say, you know, when we first received the models, we had four clashes, and now here we are in week 12 of the bidding process, and now we're down to zero clashes. Again, with the idea behind it being it's much cheaper and easier to solve these problems inside this digital world than it is to solve it out in the real field. Now, once I have the report done, I can actually save this report and then I can, when I get the newest model from the designers, I simply have to update it and I'll get a new status with those exact same uh, settings and so I can compare this over time over and over. Now that's one way that we can run Clash Detective. There's actually another way. Let's say that rather than looking from model to model, I want to look at specific areas and we're going to use selection sets to help us with this. So let's find all of the items that have the name duct in them. So here in my find items tool, I'm going to be looking for any item that has the name that contains the word duct. Now I find all of these items and you can see some of the items actually highlighted here, but most of them are going to be inside the building. So I've got a list now and I'm going to take that list and create what's called a selection set. And I'm going to call this selection set duct. Now let's say I'm looking for any item that has the name pipe. I find all of these items and again I create a new selection set called pipe. So let's see what we ended up with here. Let's control this view a little bit. And let's actually turn off the structural and the architectural models and the site. So I'm going to turn the architectural model off, I'm going to turn the site off, and I'm going to turn the structure off. So now I'm just left with the MEP and I'll also turn off the furniture models as well. So now I'm just left with the MEP models. Let's now run our Clash Detective, but instead of using models or even individual elements, I'm going to use some of these sets we just created, and I'm going to compare duct versus pipe. I start the test. Clash Detective has found 312 specific interferences. 
I can go to the results tab. I can now look at these interferences. Here's a classic case of a pipe and a duct interfering with each other. And then I could write the report. The important thing to note is that I can look at this information any number of ways. I can select groups that I want to select and I'm able to get the exact view that I want to communicate most effectively with the design team.